In this video, I will introduce the concept of P elements. A P element is a class II transposable element found in the genome of Drosophila, which is commonly called the fruit fly. A class II transposable element is a DNA-based mobile genetic element that moves with a cut and paste mechanism using only DNA intermediates. This piece of DNA has the capability of jumping from one location in the DNA to another. A P element looks like a typical class II transposon. It has 31 base pair terminal inverted repeats at both ends and a single open reading frame across four exons that encodes the enzyme transposase. So how does this P element jump from one part of the DNA to another? This process involves discrete steps called excision, drift, and integration. The gene is transcribed into RNA, and then a spliceosome removes the introns and splices the exons together. This mRNA is then translated into the polypeptide that folds into transposase. The transposase will recognize and bind to the terminal inverted repeats of the transposon and multimerize. It facilitates the excision of the entire transposon from the DNA. The transposon will then move with the transposase, which is the drift step, to the recipient site where the transposase will cut the DNA and facilitate the insertion of the transposon into the recipient site. As you can see, because of the way transposase cuts the recipient site, the integrated transposon will always be flanked by eight base pair direct repeats originating from the genomic sequence of the insertion site. This is the result of the way the transposase cuts the recipient site, resulting in sticky ends on either end of the transposon insertion. P elements, when fully functional, are autonomous. That means they have intact terminal inverted repeats that carry a full coding gene for transposase. These autonomous elements can encode transposase, and that transposase can recognize the terminal inverted repeats, excise the transposon, and reinsert it elsewhere in the DNA. In the wild, all kinds of variants of P elements can be found. Some contain deletions in the exons encoding transposase, preventing the expression of functional transposase protein. These P elements are called non-autonomous, as they require transposase produced from other autonomous P elements elsewhere in the genome to be able to transpose. Transposase produced from another element is said to be provided for the non-autonomous P element in trans. Other variants include P elements with degraded inverted terminal repeats. These P elements have become locked in their current genomic position as they cannot be excised by transposase. When dealing with P elements, there are two strains of Drosophila, the M strain, which does not contain P elements, and the P strain, which does contain P elements. P elements in P strain flies are not just hopping around at any point in the fly's life. In P strain flies, the P element cannot transpose in somatic cells. These are the cells making up the fly's body except the germline cells. Transposition can't happen in the somatic cells because the splicing event necessary to create active transposase does not occur in somatic cells. Transposition of the P element can only occur in germline cells of flies where the splicing event can take place. This movement of P elements in germline cells is called hybrid dysgenesis. Let's take a look at possible fertilization events between parent generations to see when P elements have the ability to move around the genome in germline cells of resulting offspring. We remember that M strain flies do not carry P elements. So in a cross between two M strain flies, we see that no offspring carry P elements and therefore no P element movement can occur. In a cross between a male P strain fly and a female M strain fly, the male fly donates DNA carrying P elements in his sperm, while the female fly donates DNA without P elements in her egg. In this situation, hybrid dysgenesis does occur in the germline of the resulting offspring, and the P element can jump to different locations in the genome, potentially becoming mutagenic if it lands in a gene. 
given a P strain female mated with an M strain male, you would expect the resulting offspring to have hybrid dysgenesis occurring in their germline cells. But it turns out that in P strain females' eggs, there's a high concentration of P element repressor molecules, which prevent the transcription of transposase. Without transposase, the P element cannot be excised from the DNA, and therefore it must stay put. Hybrid dysgenesis does not occur any time the mother donates a P chromosome to her offspring. So now you can see that hybrid dysgenesis can only occur in offspring that receive the P strain chromosome from their father and the M strain chromosome from their mother. This is the only case in which the P element transposase is active and able to mobilize the element in the germline cells. You may be wondering what use P elements can be for a scientist in a lab. One use of P elements would be in enhancer trapping. A modified P element that inserts near an enhancer in a fly's genome can then be used to identify and study the activity of that enhancer, and therefore the activity of the genes generally associated with that enhancer. So those are the basics of P elements. If you want to review the basics of transposons, you can check out my video on transposons. You may also be interested in my video on enhancer trapping.